Hey everyone, I'm Robert Hernandez, editor at large at immersiveshooter.com, and today we're taking a look at the Insta360 Pro. This is the high end camera from the Insta360 line of cameras. Uh, it goes for around $3,500. Can shoot up to 8K stereoscopic for photography and up to 6K stereoscopic uh, 3D for video. It's a really, really great camera, really durable. Comes with six lenses all the way around with microphones to help you get closer to spatial audio or to do spatial audio. Let me start off with the ports underneath. First ports to take a look at are the power source. You can keep this plugged in and keep your camera going for a long time. Uh, in my time working with it, it didn't overheat. Um, the fan is constantly going and the design really helps keep it cool. Um, I haven't heard any reports of it overheating. It's got an ether port to connect and run uh, that way as well, especially if you want to live stream and things like that. And it's also got an external microphone jack. On the other side, it has a variety of other ports. Uh, it's got the USB-C, USB, and uh, the output for uh, mini HDMI. What's interesting to me that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about is that while you can record on an SD card, like you can with any other camera, you could record onto an external hard drive here. So you can pop a, uh, an external hard drive connected to the camera and essentially record one track to to literally run out of space on that hard drive. So that's something uh, I was hoping to test out when doing a time lapse, to be able to record something for a really long time and not have to deal with how uh, it breaks up the tracks after X amount of time. Um, it records uh, with an SD card. You can take a look at that in the back. This is where the battery is located. In my time of using it, I, I, I charged it, didn't use that much battery when I did a shoot. Uh, went down to the lowest of about 70% after using it for about a half hour uh, or so with constant shooting. Um, hidden in here, it took me a moment to, to track it down, is where the SD card is. Hidden right in this little slot right here. Right? So uh, pop that SD card in there. Uh, this is an adapter for micro SD and you can start recording onto uh, the camera. When I record with a typical 360 camera, I aim to put it at around eye level sometimes, a little higher, a little lower, but I noticed that this camera comes across a little bit taller. So I would recommend going lower when you're setting up the camera, because when I viewed it in a head mounted display, I felt much taller than what the environment and where that camera was. So think about lining those cameras up to your chin or lower is what I've been finding for that kind of eye level point of view. First button right here is to start it up. It takes a while to start up. It takes almost about a minute for, for it to start up. You immediately hear the fan going. Now, Insta knew the, the, the fan problem and has recorded the audio of it and has, when you hear the video, it removes the sound of the fan. It has booted up and let me kind of give you a tour of the different menus. Up and down arrows to go to different categories. The file formats do I want? Uh, do I want burst, HDR? You can also record in RAW. That gives you a lot more flexibility in post. And this button right over here in the middle allows you to calibrate. Um, the calibration tool is aimed uh, to run a program. You hit the button and you give it about three feet of space. And what it does is it takes a photo and it calibrates the stitches to optimize uh, the, the product at the end. It's really, really thoughtful and easy to use. Um, all this stuff is super, super simple. If I wanted to record uh, a video, live stream, or take a picture, here I'm gonna take a picture. What I do is hit the button, it's countdowns to three, takes the picture, and then it starts processing it. Uh, and just like that, it has stitched the image together. So while you can control the camera via uh, the buttons and its own interface, onboard interface, what many of us producing 360 video like is the ability to do it remotely. And of course, the Insta360 Pro can do that. There are two different ways to connect, whether you're using the Wi-Fi network through a router or just straight to the camera, which is what we're gonna do right here. And as you can see, it's already connected. 
While I can hit the buttons, the up and down to select the certain settings, I can do that through the app. And the app works for your phone, for your tablet. Um, and it's really fantastic, uh, really easy to use. So here I'm gonna click on uh, the photo icon and it'll give you a preview window of, of what you're shooting. So through the app, I've connected to the camera and I'm live previewing uh, the footage in 360 3D stereoscopic. And it's a trip because it's like I'm having an out of body experience. I see myself in a slight delay in terms of how I'm viewing the video. It's pretty weird. And hit record. Takes that delay, starts recording. Now here's this other delay that I've seen. Uh, after recording for say 10 seconds, I hit stop. And there's a lag there that keeps on going for almost 10 seconds. Um, that one went for 10 seconds exactly. So there's a delay from when you hit stop to when it actually stops. And then it processes it if I want it to. There are some flaws in the app that when I go um, horizontal, some of the buttons and the features are, are missing. And when I go back, sometimes they come back and sometimes they don't. That's a little bug in the app that I'm sure they'll be able to fix easily. This camera goes for $3,500. Well, the Z cam goes for about $2,500. This is mono, fantastic, my tank, my go-to camera. But I'm gonna say this now, the Insta360 Pro may have dethroned it. I can't believe I'm saying that. I love the Z cam, I love the community, both in the Z cam community, the Facebook group, but the Insta360 Pro for this price unlocks the ability for stereoscopic. Cameras that do stereoscopic go up to uh, $30,000 for the, the V1 for the Z-Cam. So this is a really great way to get into stereoscopic production with the flexibility of mono for both video and for photos. I'm Robert Hernandez, editor at large for immersiveshooter.com and I'll see you in Stereoscopic 360.